Welcome to the television ministry of King David Baptist Church, 2329 North King Avenue in Lutcher, Louisiana, under the leadership of Pastor Ferdinand Wallace Jr., a church that's warm, friendly, and our doors are always open and welcoming. King David Baptist Church. Lord, we come to say thank you. Thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Well, Lord, you've been good. You've been kind and you've been merciful. Lord, as we stop by this day to worship you in spirit and truth, let your word go forth as a mighty wind. Let it fall upon the good ground. That some lost soul would be saved. Some backslider would find their way back home. Your saints would be edified. We give you glory. We give you honor. And Lord, in the words of my mouth, in the meditation of my heart, Lord, let it be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The Lord, we give you glory. And we give you the praise. It's in the mighty name of Jesus and Christ that we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning. I'm Pastor Ferdinand Wallace Jr., the pastor of King David Baptist Church of 2329 King Avenue in Lutcher, Louisiana. We welcome you to come out and fellowship with us in our Sunday worship service every Sunday at 8 o'clock. Our Lord's Supper service is on first Sunday. Our Mission is on Tuesday at 5 o'clock. Bible study, prayer service is on Thursday beginning at 5.30. Prayer service, 6 o'clock, Bible study. Come on out and be blessed. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 7, beginning at verse number 6. And in the Old Testament, I was given the books of the laws that were written by Moses. Deuteronomy, he was given the law the second time. And chapter 7, beginning at verse number 6. And you dare say, Amen. Amen. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all the people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor chose you, because you were more in numbers than any people. For you were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he, had, he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers. And the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage for the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, and repay them that hate him to their face, to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hate him, and he will repay him to his face. Talk about a faithful God. A faithful that he is. He is faithful. And we can depend on God. If you can depend on nobody else, I can depend on God. I got a God that is faithful. And whatever he promised me, that he will do. I can stand on his word, for he said that heaven and earth will pass away for my word. To stand for heaven. So I'd rather be in his word than rather be in heaven or on earth. Because he said all of these things will pass, but my word will stand for heaven. 
So we got something that we can stand upon. You have given us these 66 books of the Bible. And in that is much promises that you have given unto us. And all we got to do is read it, obey it, and apply it to our lives. But the problem is we don't know the promises that God has for us because we don't know the word of God. But when you know the word of God, when you have studied for yourself, man can't tell you anything. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what the, the law company says. I don't care what nobody else says. But they say on your job, the bottom line is what God has to say. Because what God has for me, it is for me. What God has for you, I don't care what, what doors may be closed. I know someone that can open doors. I know someone that... There's nothing that is impossible with him. I know a God that specializes in things that seem impossible. He got all things in his hand. And he's in control of everything. So I'm going to put my faith and trust in him. Because he is, he's faithful. He's faithful. I serve a faithful God. I want you to know today, at the end of this message, that you got a faithful God. Yeah. That he will be right there with you. Yeah. And he promised us, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And if he said it, he's going to do it. He said, many are the affliction of the righteous, but I'm going to deliver you out of them all. So if God said it, that settles it, I believe it, and whether I believe it or not, he's still going to do what he said he's going to do. He's going to do. The children of Israel, they were on their way into the promised land. Moses was spending his last month with them. And those that were in the wilderness, they had died off. That was there. And these were the ones that had not known the laws of God. So he was reciting unto them the second time. This is the book of Deuteronomy. The second time the law is given. He was letting them know where God had brought them from and that he would keep the promise that he had made unto their old fathers. The promise that he made unto Abraham, the promise he made unto Isaac, and to Jacob. That I would be the father of many nations. That God would take them to the promised land. I want to know that even though he has given it unto the children of Israel, that God still has a promise for us. And the promise for us that one day he's coming back. I don't know the day, I don't know the hour, but I can stand on the promises and I can let you know that he is coming back. He said in his word, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. If you believe in God, believe also in me that in my father's house are many mansions. And if it was not so, I would have told you, but I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'm coming back again. And yes, he went. He got up out of that grave with all the power in his hand. He ascended back into his Father in glory. And right now he is seated at the right hand of God and he is making intercessions for us. He's preparing the place for us. He's preparing your mansion and our mansion right now. Thank you, but he's coming back. But he's coming back for prepared people for a prepared place. And one of these days, how do you know? The trumpet will sound. Say this word. That the dead in Christ is going to rise first. And we and every man going to be caught up to meet him in the end. He's coming back. Will you be ready? Have you made your preparation? Do you know him? Do you know him? And when he comes back, it's going to be either one destination or the other. Either going to be in heaven or you're going to hell. But hell was not made for us. But you go out there by your own choice. He won us. That's what he came into this world for. To die for our sins. To make a way back for us. But whosoever will, he said, let them, let them come. He's not going to force himself upon you. you got to make that choice. And whatever choice you make, you got to make it while you are alive on this earth. Because when you're dead, you can't make that choice. <laughs> if you had made it right now, while the blood is still running warm in your veins. But if you have made the Lord your choice, I just want to let you know that I can depend on Him. I can 
trust him. He promised me that he will take care of me. So what are we worried about? What are we stressing out about? God has promised us that he cares for us, he loves us, and that he will take care of us. We just got to put our faith and trust in him. He loved him. He loved him. He had compassion on them. And he said, I love you. I have not set my love upon you because you are all of that. But I love you, and the love that I have for you is an everlasting love. And God loved us from everlasting to everlasting. He loved us unconditionally. And while we were yet in our sin, God sent forth his son to die for us. Even when we didn't love God ourselves, we didn't even know God, God loved us. He loved us so much, not just for the Jews, but he loved everybody. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves you. You don't know nothing else. God loves you. He loves you. And he won't let you go through anything to hurt you, but what you're going through is to help you to make you better. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. See, we, we worried about this and worried about that, and God is telling us to count it all joy. Why to count it joy? Because I've got this in control. And whatever God has brought us to, he's going to bring us through. That all things are working together for the good of them that love him, that are called according to his purpose. So you can hold your head up. You can thank God for whatever it is in the midst of it all because God loves you. When you didn't even love yourself, yet God still loves you. He made ways out of no ways. And he's still looking beyond our thoughts and still see our needs. That's good to know. I got a father who cares. I got a father that loves me. He said, if my earthly father know how to give me good gifts, what about my heavenly father? He loves me. He loves you. And he loves you with an everlasting love. And he's not going to let you stay in that condition. Trouble don't last always. It's only temporarily. Thank God that what we're going through is only for a season. That one of these days, all of this is going to be all over. So leave all of this behind. He promised us that he would be a very present help in the time of trouble. So if he is my help in the time, I can trust him. I can put my faith and trust in him that he will be right there with me. Just be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted. You got to exalt him. Lift him up. Give him praise. He loved them. He set his love upon them. And he did it because that's who he wanted to do. God just was God all by himself. That's why he did it. He loved them. I love you. I set my love upon you. And then he has said, I've chosen you. I've chosen you. And I've chosen you because you were, not because you were more in number than any people. He said you were the fewest in number. He chose them to be his God chose you. Out of all the ones he could have chosen, he chose you. He saved you. That's an honor. That's a privilege. Somebody say, it could have been me outdoors. It could have been me. But yet God saw fit to save a wretch like me. And it wasn't that I was all of that. Oh, he knew I was. God already knew that there was nothing. We were filthy rags in his eyesight, but yet he still saw fit to save a wretch just like you. Yes. And you ought to thank God yes. that he saved you. Yes. And if you're not saved, you ought to thank God that you got an opportunity to be saved. Yes. All you have to receive. He 
get the press for us. He did it for us way back at Calvary. And we have accepted what he has done for us. Somebody prayed for us. Somebody had some time to pray for us. But it was Jesus Christ, what he did for us at Calvary, that was able to save us. Somebody came and shared with us the word of God. But we ought to thank God. There ain't nothing that we did. And not going to be all of that. It's not about you live. It's not because of what you got in the bank. It's not your education. There ain't none of that made you who you are. It was nobody but God. Because if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, without him, you are nothing. You can have all the money in the world. You can have all the riches in the world. You can have all the mansions, all the cars. But if you don't know Jesus, you are nothing. You are on your way to hell. But if you got Jesus, you got Jesus, it's all right because all of these things, you're not going to make them out of God. Because every good and every perfect gift comes from God. But he loved us. And he chose me. Out of all the ones he could have chosen, he chose me. Out of all the ones he could have chosen, he chose you to save you. And we got someone that is still out there in this world. And we got so much to be thankful for. Thank God that he blessed us. Thank God that he kept us. Somebody else was wanting to be here. I'm able to be here. But yet he chose you to be here all of this day. Yet he woke you up this morning. Because everything is in God's hand. Life and death is in God's hands. He woke you up. He allowed you to be here. And you ought to thank God. That he gave you another chance, another opportunity. And all of these things we take for granted. We think that we're supposed to be here. He's supposed to give us these things. We're supposed to have this. But God can take it from us in a minute and in a moment and turn it on. Our mind could be gone. We can lose a child, we can lose home, we can lose in a moment and take it on. Things happen. But God chose you. God blessed you to be here today. And you ought to say, Lord, I thank you. Ain't nothing that we have done. But he just loves us. Ain't that we got all that? Oh, I could be an accident. Ain't that you could be nothing to this? Because God don't need you. You need God. People think that they, they can't do nothing without me. Just try. <laughs> Just try. God don't need us. God will raise up a generation to do what he needs to get done. God will take a few people to get his work done. And if you don't want to do it, the rocks will cry out. If you don't want to do it, you make a donkey speak. If you don't want God can do anything. He don't need us. We need him. And I'm just grateful. I'm just a vessel that won't be used. Lord, wherever you want me to go, I'll go. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do. I'm honored. I'm privileged just to be here. Because he didn't have to do it. Lord, thank you. He loved me. He had chosen us. We didn't choose ourselves. He did it because he, he loved us. He loved us. So he had passion for us. He had compassion for us. And the reason why he did it, not because we were all that, but he did it because I love you. I saved you because I love you. They were the fewest in nations. They didn't have all of this, they didn't have all of that. But yet God still saved them. He still loved them. Yeah. And you know what he did for them? The desire that he had to do? He wanted them so much that whatever they did, God still redeemed them. He still forgave them. They kept on messing up and God kept on delivering them over and over and over and over again. They, 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 they messed up again and God delivered them again. 
they, they say, Lord, we loved him. They fell down and they worshiped him. And everything was good when he delivered them. And then you know what? They went right back and did the same thing all over again. And it's just like us. God still forgives us and we still go back and we do the same thing all over again. God's still a forgiving God. He still takes care of us. He still delivers us. Lord, if you save me from this, I'll serve the balance of my day. He delivered us and you know what? We go right back and do the same thing all over again. But thank God, God is not like us. <laughs> God is a faithful God. And he is a loving God. He is a caring God. And even when we mess up and we make mistakes, he's still with his arms wide open. Who is up with you? And all we got to do is confess our sins. And he's faithful and he's just to forgive us. And there is none righteous, no, not one. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But he made ways out of no ways. He made ways out of no ways. He desired them. And all he desired for them to be his children. He desired for you to be his children. He desired for you to be in the family. And that's an honor. That's a privilege that I can call him for. That's an honor and a privilege that I am a child of God. You ought to thank God that I am his child. If anybody asks you who I am, just tell them that I am a, a child of God. I'm a child. Because there was one time that I wasn't his child. Yes, he created me, but I wasn't his child. It was only until I accepted the Lord as my Savior that I came into the body of Christ. Thank God. We have been sealed until the day of redemption. Those that have been born again. And any man in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. God is faithful. He wants us to be in his body. He desires us. It's not as real that any should perish, but that all should come into eternal life. Yeah. And what he has done, he has delivered us. He reminded them, I brought you out with a mighty hand, out of the hand of Pharaoh. Yeah. They were in bondage, but God brought them out. And you know what? They walked through on dry ground. They crossed the Red Sea. God did it. God delivered them. He said, Moses, what do you have in your hand? A rod. Stretch forth that rod. And they parted the Red Sea. And they walked through on dry ground. And when they made it through, the water came back over. All I need to know is that they served the same gods. That you gotta be careful what you do to other folks. Because <laughs> when you cross over, <laughs> what you have done for others is gonna come right back all of you. And God has brought you safely through. Yeah, yeah. It'll fall right back on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody said, be careful the, thing, the ditch you dig. Because <laughs> the one you dig, it may be just for you. See? Yeah. Be careful what you're doing to others because what you're doing to them, they may fall back on you. Be careful what you talk about other people because what you talk about others, it may fall back on you. The same message of me is coming back unto you. We won't talk about everybody else. They ain't my child. Too. Don't know. And it would happen to our families. It would happen to our children. Gotta be careful what you say. Gotta be careful what you do. Because what you throw out is coming back. Life is a boomerang. God is not mocked. You're gonna reap what you sow. You gotta try to live right. You gotta try to treat people like you wanna be treated. Treat people with love. Because it's coming back. The same measure that you measured out, it's coming back on you. Oh, yes. And it comes back in many ways. Oh, sure not. More than one. Yeah. You gotta know God for your for yourself. Yeah. And just as He delivered the children of Israel, God has delivered us. Because we were in bondage. We were in sin. Thank God that He delivered us out of our sins. He delivered us out of bondage. And He did it for us at Calvary. The wages of sin was death.
gift of God, He has given us eternal life. And that is through Christ Jesus. And I'm grateful for what He has done for us. I'm grateful that He has saved us out of bondage. We are to be grateful. And just as He did it for Israel, He has done it for us. He has been faithful to us. He has delivered us out of bondage. He brought us out. And he is faithful to his promise. Whatever the promise, that is the promise. I did it because I love you. And he also did it because I'm going to be faithful to the promise that I made to your father that was on the other side. And God is going to do what he said he's going to do because he's going to be faithful to his promise. God is God and he's God all by himself. He's a man and he's still not mine. We can stand on his word. We can trust him. We can take him at his word. That's what he wants from us. Just to put your faith and trust in God. Because he is a Whatever you promise us, that he will do. And there is no temptation that is common unto man. But God is faithful that he will give us a way to escape. I don't care what you're going through, you can escape it if you want to. But the problem is, we don't want to escape. We, we yield to it. It's not the temptation, it's not the problem. Is when you yield to that temptation. Is when you give in to that temptation. That becomes the, the problem. That becomes the issue. But he will give us a way to escape. Will we take it? Will we run? Or will we entertain? Or will we stay there? Will we leave? He's given us the wrong. But we stay there. You walk with them. You sit down with him, and eventually going to be the same spirit is going to come upon you. Be careful. We pray that it has been a blessing unto you. We're looking forward to seeing you in person. Come on out and be blessed at King David Baptist Church, 2329 King Avenue in Lutch, Louisiana. This has been Pastor Ferdinand Wallace Jr. Thank you for watching. If you'd like a copy of today's program, please contact us at the King David Baptist Church at area code 225-869-8595. That's 225-869-8595. Please note the title of today's program. Thank you for viewing today's service of the King David Baptist Church located at 2329 North King Avenue in Lutcher, Louisiana under the leadership of Pastor Ferdinand Wallace Jr. Pastor Wallace and the members and congregation invite you to join them for service starting each Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Until next time, we thank you for viewing and have a great weekend.